In this video, we'll be going over several different techniques that you can use to handle missing data in R. Now, the data that we're going to be working with is in a data frame named data, and it has two variables, var1 and var2, short for variable1 and variable2. Now, you'll notice that some of these values are actually grayed out and have the text NA. This is how R represents a missing value. Var1 has multiple missing values, and Var2 has some missing values as well. And then there is one case that has missing data for both values. Now, this is simulated data, but it mirrors a sort of real-life data management problem. If you're giving a survey, there will be someone who skips a question. If you're giving some type of task, there'll be someone who violates the assumptions of the task and their data is not usable. You'll lose a sample. You won't be able to use a sample due to some other constraints. So you will have missing data and you will have to do with it. Now, with how the data currently is, if you were to just try to calculate the mean of var1, var1, R can't actually do it because it's trying to compute the mean for all of the values, including the missing ones. You can't compute an average of a number that doesn't exist, so to speak. However, fortunately for a lot of functions in R, there is another argument that we can add that essentially tells R to just ignore those missing values, na.rm equals t, or true. So in this case, R is able to say, okay, I get it. The values aren't there. I'm going to ignore those NAs and calculate the mean. Now, for a lot of simple functions, this works well. However, there are cases where this presents a problem, and the na.rm equals true function is not actually a feasible solution. In these cases, what you need to do is remove those missing values. So how would you go about doing that? There are multiple different ways that you could go about this. We're going to go through a couple. One way to attack it is to first identify all of the missing values in your data frame using a new third variable that says whether or not there's a missing value in var1 or var2. So to start, let's create that new column in our data frame. We specify our data frame, and now here our studio is telling us we have var1 and var2, but if we just continue typing in a new name, we're actually creating this new column, and then we would need to set it equal to something. In this case, we're actually going to set it equal to the output of the function is.na, and we are going to go with the first argument in there being data dollar sign var, which is the column in the data frame that the is.na function will actually determine is this value na or not. So if we run that code, we can see that it creates this new column. And when in var1, there's a missing value, it reports true. When there is no missing value, it reports false. However, as the code is currently written, it will not identify missing values in var2. However, one simple modification of our code allows us to get past that. Okay, so once we've repeated that code, you can actually use an OR Boolean command says that you're able to see is there a missing value in variable 1 or variable 2. In R, OR is the vertical bar, which you may know as the pipe symbol or the piping symbol or the vertical slash. Then we specify our second condition for subsetting. In this case, it is done at an A, bear two. So now, mm, ah, that's what it is. There should be no capital there. All right, so now that we've run the code correctly, we can see that it does identify when we actually have a true value. Gets us 
there's a missing variable in variable one. And when we have a missing value in variable two, it also reports true. And when we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see that when there's a missing value in both cases, it also reports a true. So now we have a column in our data frame that will actually report whether or not there is a missing value anywhere in our data frame. Now, if you had six variables, it's just a simple matter of extending this out to your heart's content. So now it's time to actually remove these cases. Now, we're going to use the filter function from the package Dippler. Now, presumably, you would have had this package installed. If not, there are lots of resources that talk about it. But the first thing we would need to do is call that up from the library. Once it's called up, we can then use that filter function. Now, we actually want to save the output of this function as well. So let's go clean data and then filter. The first argument we need to specify is the data frame that we're filtering. In this case, I've named it data. And then we need to specify the condition for filtering. In other words, what rows do we want to keep? So in this case, we want all the rows where missing data has a value that is not equal to true. So as you can see here, it created this new data frame, clean data. And when we look over here, we can see that all of these values are now false, and we have no missing values any longer. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually just remove those rows from the data, data frame by simply setting it equal to itself. So data equals filter data missing data does not does not equal true. In which case it'll actually overwrite the data frame that you had and remove those missing cases in that fashion. Either works, um, really depends on if you're trying to preserve the original data frame or not. So that's one way you can handle missing values. Now this principle also applies if you had outliers and you need to identify outliers and get rid of them. So let's plot variable one and variable two on a scatter plot and see how this relationship goes. So when we're looking here, we can see for the most part, we have this nice, strong, positive linear relationship. However, there is one case that is a, quote, bivariate outlier. If we were to look at x alone, it's, yeah, it's on the fringes of x, but it's not really too far out and the same for y. But when you look at x and y combined, it's clearly different than the rest of the scores. Let's say we were justified in removing this case from our data analysis. Now, it follows the same logic and process that we would take when excluding missing cases from our data set. So, we would first need to identify that missing value in some fashion. So, we'll actually do this the same way where we create a new variable in our data frame. So, data dollar sign outlier. And then we would set that equal to something. Now, the first way we could do this mirrors exactly how we identified those missing values, or mirrors them very closely, where we're going to put a logical evaluation in there and then save that output. So in this case, if we were to look at it, all right, we are, you know, below 85 on X, and we're also above 75 on Y. So we have these two conditions that would identify this value. So data dollar sign var1 is less than 85. And data dollar sign var2 is 
looking at this, greater than 75. There we go. So once we refresh that data, now we can actually see how we have true and false statements all the way up and down. And when we find that one outlier that has a value that looks like it's 80 for variable 1 and 80 for variable 2, we have a true value identifying it. Then you could follow the same exact process as before where you would actually say, okay, let's filter this case out. So clean data equals filter data, data, excuse me, outlier is not equal to true. So here, before we move on, we can remember that case was case five it looks like we come over here case five is no longer true we no longer have those and if we were to replot that from the clean data frame now there one that outlier is now gone now that's one way you could actually code it where it has those true and false. Now, there may be a situation where you would actually like to encode that differently and not have it just be a logical value. Maybe you wanted to code it as a 1 or a 0 or use some other term. If we're going to handle it in that fashion, we would need to actually use something called an if-else statement. So let's go back to data and let's create sort of an alternate code for our outlier. In this case, if else, first thing that we need to specify is our condition. So if data dollar sign bear one is less than 85 and data dollar sign bear 2 is greater than 75. The next argument we need to input is the value we actually want to have saved. Let's say that's a 1 to indicate yes, we're an outlier. And then the next argument is if that statement actually is false, so 0. Ah, if else is misspelled. Now we refresh data. Now we can see when that outlier is there, we find that it has a value of 1, whereas everything else has a value of 0. And then we could run through the same sort of filtering and subsetting all over again, where clean data is equal to filter data, and then data dollar sign alt code outlier is not equal to 1. And if we look at clean data, no more 1s, but that 1 is still there in our original data set. So you could filter it out any way. The nice thing about this is it would also let you identify and give string values as well. So it's instead of bringing up this code, 1 and 0, you could, you know, have get rid of and keep. All right, so that concludes excluding missing data and taking care of outliers. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, there are some other videos up there as well.